Hi, everybody. This is Jay Hartzell, uh, Dean of the McComb School of Business. And I'm really happy today to have Martin Otto, the Chief Operating Officer of HEB, with us today. Good to see you, Martin. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Jay. Uh, it's our pleasure. And uh, as we were talking before, uh, this is our uh, second in a series of lessons from the field where we're uh, bringing in business leaders uh, that are associated in some way with our school uh, to, to share some insights and, and things, obviously, in this, this crazy time that you know, we've never seen before. So maybe to pick up there, can you tell us a little bit about HEB's journey, uh, given the COVID crisis? And you know, what, what had you seen before as a company that positioned you for this? And, and what was just something that you, that was, this was unlike something you'd ever seen before? Yeah, this is, uh, I like, I think for for all of us, this has been unlike anything we've ever seen or really expected to happen in our lifetimes. And uh, the most uh, similar things that we've experienced are hurricanes here in Texas. And what happens with those is they create a tremendous amount of disruption in a short amount of time for a limited number of cities and stores. This is different in that it has created a massive disruption for a very, very long period of time across all of our stores. And uh, What's helped us is uh, that we've had a standing emergency preparedness uh, director and small team for uh, quite a number of years now. And that's because of the hurricanes in Texas and also for other natural disasters. And by having that team in place, it gave us maybe a bit of a head start to to plan for what was coming because um, between having that team and then all of us seeing what was happening in China in late December, allowed us to begin planning for what might happen in early January, which culminated in the tabletop exercise that uh, that team ran uh, in very early February. And so between that work and then also the uh, information that we were getting from uh, some of our vendors uh, overseas and from our chief medical officer about what this illness was about and what it was like to mean, and his his projections turned out to be accurate, all of that prepared us. as well as you could for something like this. But even with that, it's been, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, sort of the land of uh, twists and turns and uh, constant surprises every single day for for weeks and weeks on end. So what what do you think, you know, in a a uh, non-COVID world or crisis world, you'll take away from this as a lesson learned? So whether that's as a leader or as a a company, uh, what, what are, can you tell what the takeaways are yet? Yes, it's been very interesting. Uh, so, uh, for uh, I'll start with for the company, and uh, you know some of the things we'll, we'll do differently coming out of this, and I'll speak to some of the leadership lessons after that. The uh, I'll start with the supply chain, and uh, you know I think about the supply chain as three parts. There's the uh, consumer product goods manufacturers, and the farmers, and the ranchers, and the uh, meat packing houses. Uh, at the beginning and at the end, there's there's our stores. In the middle is our warehouses and our uh, transportation operation. And the part one of the supply chain was in good shape early on. There was plenty of product in our country to be able to take care of the big demand. And our stores were able to scale up uh, quickly as well. The bottleneck for us was the supply chain and uh, the distribution centers, I mean. And uh, we, like I think uh, most companies, have always run that lean. And so it didn't allow for a big a surge in capacity. And that was a uh, job one was to be able to work through that. And uh, going forward, one of the lessons is that uh, we're going to look to run that with a little bit more excess capacity so that we can be prepared for this, uh, this kind of thing or something like it. I'd say the, the, the other uh, thing that we needed to get done as a business was uh, really care for our partners, our employees. We refer to one another as partners because uh, ultimately, As has been well documented in the press, uh, those are the folks who are on the front line, so to speak, of of this illness, particularly in the early days when nobody really knew what the illness meant and what the consequences were. And so our partners in the stores and the warehouses were the ones who were really working day in and day out. Uh, And this was before we were able to acquire masks, which was a whole challenge of its own. And uh, we were, you know, so we thought, through what do we need to do there to cause a level of comfort uh, for our partners and a level of safety that... um, that you know they could feel feel good about, and so that resulted in a, in a lot of steps that we took. But the, you know, I don't know that this is a lesson uh, necessarily, but it certainly re- uh, reinforced what uh, we we have always paid a lot of attention to, which is how how our entire team, how our partners feel about HUB and uh, about working together. And I'm very thankful for the culture that we have because uh, so I'd say supply chain is is, is the, the, a big lesson you know going forward in terms of uh, how we 
create some more capacity there. In terms of leadership lessons, I think it reinforced uh, maybe some things that we knew already, but there's, a, I'd say, a change that's come out of it is around this whole Zoom uh, meeting approach and uh, what the role is at the office um, going forward. But uh, the, I'd say the lessons in leadership, uh, number one, is that um, to, you got to have a great team. And uh, that's, uh, it's about uh, the chemistry and working together. It's about tenure and knowing how the business runs. It's about uh, a focus on the details. In this environment, there were so many changes and so many decisions that happened on the fly that uh, we all had to rely, I'd say, a lot more on intuition, which is born out of years of being in the business and, and doing the sort of work than it was born out of data that we, you know, had a whole lot of time to, to run and analyze. Obviously, the analytics matter a lot, and we did that and always do that. But uh, the intuition, without the intuition that's formed by these years of, of, uh, of becoming experts, really, at what the entire team does, we would have been in a lot of trouble. And, and I, don't, I don't know that um, uh, people in business always pay much, as much attention to the last detail as they might. And so that, that served us quite well. Um, other lessons here, I'd say, are around communication and how important that is in a crisis where things change so quickly and what's right one day is wrong the next day or is different than the, ne the next day. And we have had, um, you know, standing calls uh, first daily and now weekly uh, with uh, you know, 900, almost 1,000 people uh, each day and then each week uh, now as, as the crisis has progressed to uh, be sure that we're all on the same page and we're all aware of what's changing. We're all aware of where the problems are so that we can uh, know what those are and then work together to, uh, to fix them and to be, be on the same page. That's been critically important. Uh, communication has been important across all the different constituencies as well. So our, our large partner uh, base, we uh, started early on with some videos uh, from our chief medical officer and other physicians to explain the, the illness and what are the consequences and how do you prevent it or how do you avoid it? And, um, and uh, so the communication has been essential. And then I'd say the, uh, the other uh, reinforced lesson, which I think we've always done a pretty good job with at HEB is to understand that we serve every constituency. So it's, it's not just uh, our customers, it's our customers, it's our partners, it's our shareholders, it's our suppliers, it's our communities, it's all of those. And, uh, and, and it's our elected officials. And uh, we, we, uh, I think did pretty good work early on to, and throughout the crisis uh, to understand what each of those uh, constituencies needs uh, and to feel comfortable and to uh, have delivered what they're looking for. And so, you know, hopefully that answers your question I'm in a long way, but those are, those are a few lessons and key points. No, those are great, Martin. And I, I was thinking how proud I, uh, we all are as Texans. Uh, you, you, you all are an iconic Texas company and, and have gotten a lot of, um, I think, well-deserved kudos for the way you've responded to this. And, and I, we're glad to have you in our state um, and with us. Um, you know, one of the things that you've been great for us is, is hiring our people. And we always like for you to hire more, but uh, we appreciate that whom you do hire. And I know you have a couple of daughters that have been through the school, one that is graduating, um, Caroline. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, congratulations to Caroline, and then my daughter Caitlin went here as well. If for our students um, or for our faculty and staff, as you look ahead, how does uh, post COVID, a few years from now, any sense in which this might change the way you think about talent and people and how you hire, what you look for? Well, we're gonna. I think we're gonna grow quicker, at least for a while, than we otherwise would have, because uh, you know so much demand has come our way, and so I think our hiring needs will increase uh, over over the next uh, number of years, which is good news, I think, for, for us and for the kind of opportunities that we can provide. And uh, you should know, and I think you do know this, how proud we, we likewise are to be, number one, in Texas, but secondly, to be associated with, uh, with the University of Texas, which is uh, just one of the top, top universities in the world. And uh, as I've been involved in recruiting now over the last uh, probably five, six years uh, at UT, I can't say enough about the quality of your students and uh, the instruction that they receive and uh, the breadth of knowledge that they come out of uh, out of the university with and how much value they add. It's really, it's impressive and it's a real tribute to, to you and, the, uh, and your team for, for the work that you do. In terms of uh, opportunities, uh, I, I think a lot of it remains the same. I think, you know, I've read, in, you know, a number of people say that the, um, 
that uh, what this crisis has done is not so much change things, but accelerate uh, right. things. And I think that's accurate. You know, it's clearly accelerated digital. It's uh, and it's uh, re reemphasized or reinforced the importance of, uh, as I said a minute ago, kind of knowledge of the details, being able to analytically uh, dig into issues quickly and uh, have good judgment and coming up with uh, recommendations and solutions and also communicating effectively and quickly and concisely. And a crisis like this reinforces that. There's not a lot of time to uh, read long memos or to listen to long speeches. It needs to get to the point and it needs to be understandable. And so I had to highlight the skills that matter. They're, they're largely the same, but they've been, you know, I think uh, there's been a, a point of emphasis placed on them. And so I'd say that, you know, the math is critical. The uh, communication skills are critical. It's not one or the other, it's both. And then the digital skills are really important. I'd say both, both an understanding of the digital landscape and how, it, how the pieces fit together. How does, it, how does the tech stack relate to the digital marketing program? And how does that relate to, to how that gets dis uh, distributed and communicated to, to customers? And, um, and then also, I think uh, the coding itself, I think, is a valuable skill. You know, I got a little bit of it back in the early and mid 80s, and I'm glad I did. But, uh, you know, the students today ought to have more than I did, because I think you know, even, even if they don't become a coder for, for a living, to know the questions to ask and to be able to dig in a little bit is going to be important. So I'd say those are the skills uh, that are important. Beyond that, for folks that join, want to join HEB, the rest of it, uh, they're going to learn it on the job. Yeah. Uh, I'd say one, one other thing I'd say that's super important, actually, as I think about this, is that uh, this uh, crisis, uh, probably like any, emphasizes the importance of how well folks need to work together. And uh, teamwork is essential. And uh, being able to understand and sort of intuitively get how you fit as a member of the team and what the team needs uh, from you is really important. And so that's something that uh, uh, through a crisis like this becomes uh, even more obvious. Yeah. Thanks so much, Martin. I, yeah. I promised you before it wouldn't take too much of your time, but I thought you hit some great themes and things that we've talked about on campus from uh, the need for communication, the need for transparency, the need to act as a team, because uh, yeah. the, the way we're going to get through this, as you said, is together. Um, so everybody bring in their own you know, unique, diverse perspectives and talents to the table uh, to get through this collectively. You mentioned uh, transparency. I uh, didn't get into that as much as I might have. That's absolutely essential is what... Uh, what I have found. And uh, I would say as a company, we've always been relatively transparent uh, with our team. And um, yeah, this, this has shown the importance of that. I would say being around the illness and what does it mean to, you know, our, you know, when uh, folks unfortunately do get sick with uh, the virus in the workplace, uh, how you share that and, uh, and how you handle that is really important. And uh, we've been very open about that with, uh, uh, partners on the team and stores where somebody has gotten sick. And uh, I think by doing that, it's, it's you know, it's elevates uh, or reinforces the level of trust that is essential, I think, to running any organization, be it a business, a family, a sports team or whatever. And uh, and so but your point about transparency, I think, is a, is a really critical one. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Martin. And thanks for joining us today. And uh, I think we're in the Mutual Appreciation Society. We we're very proud of our association with HEB and um, all you've done, and uh, we look forward to many more years of working together and, and, and sending you great students and having you involved in our classrooms and in our research. So thank you. Thank you, Jay. Really enjoy the conversation and appreciate the chance to, uh, to do this. And congratulations to Caroline, and, uh, and uh, we hope, uh, hope to see her back on campus. And can we get a hook em horns for the last photo shot? Can you pull one hook of these? Hook em horns. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. 